You're listening to episode four of the Journey to Launch podcast, 25 ways to improve your finances right now. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast with your host, Jamila Souffrant. As a money expert who walks her talk, she helps brave journeyers like you get out of debt, save, invest, and build real wealth. Join her on the journey to launch to financial freedom in, in five, four, three, two, one. Hi, guys. So excited to have you back again for the Journey to Launch podcast, episode four. Before we jump into today's topic, I just want to send a big, big thank you to everyone who has listened to the podcast, who has subscribed, who has sent me a message and gave me feedback. I've been getting amazing feedback from you guys, and I'm just so excited to be on this journey and podcasting. And so before we get in, I want to tell you that this episode is called 25 Ways to Improve Your Finances Right Now. You'll be able to find the episode show notes at journeytolaunch.com forward slash episode four. In the show notes, I'll also have a freebie for you. So if you want to have a checklist of the 25 things I'm about to list off, all you need to do is go to my site, go to Journey to Launch dot com forward slash episode four. I'm going to have this list as a check off. So it'll be a printable PDF form. You'll be able to print out and kind of just check off what you're currently doing, what you want to do when you have completed these 25 things. So I wanted to get that out the way first. Next, I want to touch upon a topic that recently came up. And so this past weekend, I watched the documentary what the health on Netflix. And if you don't know, what the health is the latest hot documentary about food and nutrition that's out on Netflix right now. The main theme of the documentary is that dun da da da, we should all become vegan. (laughs) The film goes on to say that mostly everything we eat is dangerous to our health, including things like beef, chicken, dairy, eggs, basically everything I like eating. It goes on to talk about the benefits of becoming a vegan and adopting a plant-based diet. After watching, I posted a video on my IG stories. And by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should. You can find me as Journey to Launch. So I posted a short video just saying, what can I actually eat? I just watched the documentary, What the Health? Because I was a bit bummed after watching it, quite frankly. And... You see, while I understand the benefits of eating more of a plant-based diet and either limiting or cutting out meat from my diet, I am nowhere ready mentally or physically to take such a leap. I even had someone reach out to me via DM on Instagram who I think she was a vegan, so she was encouraging me to make the switch. And while it was a good exchange, I couldn't help but feel a little overwhelmed by the thought of it all. And I was overwhelmed and discouraged to the point where I was just like, you know what, (laughs) I'm just not going to do anything. And I started to think, I started to think about how the thought process of the overwhelmed feelings of me watching this documentary and thinking of ways to improve my diet could feel for someone who is also thinking about how to improve their finances. So this story is not to change you to become a vegan or vegetarian. I really want to draw the parallels into changes, into making the changes we want to see in our lives. Because after watching that documentary, What the Health, I really felt, I, you know, I felt that I should definitely look at ways to improve my diet, but I was not ready to go all in the way that the documentary kind of suggested that you did. And so I started to think, wow, In finances, you can't expect someone also to make a 360 change or improvement overnight. And we talk about that a lot in finances in general. I talk about that a lot on my site. It takes baby step to make changes. And so if you are in $1,000 of debt, if you're living paycheck to paycheck, you have to first want to make the changes on your own. 
me or any other financial guru can't make you do that. That has to be all internally that you make a decision to commit to. Similar to the way no one can convince me to become a vegan or a vegetarian. It has to be a decision that I make on my own. Second, while it does help to see others improving their finances and to be inspired by other success stories, it can only be that, inspirational. Change, action, and improvement has to be implemented by you and it has to be manageable. So for instance, I know for sure that I won't become vegan overnight. And by the way, I'm not saying that I even want to become vegan. But what I can start to do is make small changes to my diet, such as maybe like a meatless day or choosing to slowly eliminate certain foods from my diet. It's the same thing with your finances. You can begin to make small changes that at the time won't seem like much, like slowly reducing how many times you buy lunch at work or giving yourself a limit on how much you spend at the grocery store. But these small changes over time do add up. The small steps create a domino effect to propel you into the big changes you want to see. So again, this is not a PSA to become a vegan, but I do recommend you watch the documentary, What the Health? But if you're not a vegetarian or vegan, don't get too overwhelmed by all the information they are giving you. But I wanted to say, like, it's all about changes. We all have things we want to improve in our lives, right? We all want to maybe lose weight or get more in shape. We may want to save more, improve our finances, improve our patients, we are all on a journey to bettering ourselves. But sometimes you may see the end goal or something you'd like to have and it just seems too far away or too crazy of a jump and leap to make. And therefore, instead of working your way towards that goal, you don't do anything because you're almost paralyzed with the overwhelmed feelings. And it doesn't have to be that way. It is a natural feeling to become overwhelmed, but the way you fight that is by breaking things up into manageable steps that you feel you can accomplish slowly over time. Baby steps and patience is key. So with that, I thought that would be a good lead-in into today's topic, the 25 ways to improve your finances right now, because in this episode, I'm giving you 25 steps that you can implement to improve your finances. They're not crazy, major, huge, huge steps. Each one can take you a couple minutes. Um, Some of them you can continue doing every day. But these are really meant to be short, implementable steps that you can do. And so if you want that freebie after you listen to the podcast, go to journeytolaunch.com forward slash episode four to download your free 25 ways to improve your finances right now checklist. And if you are enjoying the podcast so far, please continue to share with your friends. Please subscribe if you're listening on iTunes and do not forget to rate and review. It helps improve my searchability on iTunes. It helps more people find out about the podcast. So with that, let's get started. If you're looking for things you can do right now to improve your finances, look no further. (laughs) I comprised a list of 25 things you can do right, right now that will help you reach your goals to financial freedom. So I'm going to go through the list of 25 things, get your pen and paper ready, or you can refer back to my blog post, which this podcast episode is based on. I'll have that all in the show notes, which will be at journeytolaunch.com forward slash podcast. Tip one, stop buying things you can't afford. If you can't afford to pay for it in full at the moment and or you don't have the money already put aside for it, you can't afford it. Also, if you have credit card debt and you can't afford to pay more than the minimum monthly payments, you can't afford it. Really, it's something people don't want to hear, but you have to have the money saved up for whatever item or whatever thing you want to purchase. Stop putting things on your credit card that you can't immediately pay off by the end of the month. Number two, check your withholdings calculations. Do you get a large sum of money back at tax time? If so, you're probably overpaying the government in taxes. Your goal should be to get back close to zero, zilch, nada, as close as possible. 
Not owing the government and them not owing you means both sides won fair and square. If you complain or you feel that the government takes too much taxes out of your paycheck, but then at the end of the year, you're getting back thousands and thousands of dollars, that means you are giving the government throughout the year almost a free loan, no interest loan that they're holding on to your money, and then they're basically just giving it back to you. So if you're looking for more money throughout the year that you can then use how you want and budget the way you want, check your withholdings calculations. Check what your dependence levels are. Make sure that they're correct because the perfect thing is to find that sweet spot in which you're not getting money back and you don't owe. Tip number three, turn off the TV and invest in yourself. There's nothing wrong with watching a little bit of TV here and there. I mean, who doesn't love a good trashy episode of Teen Mom or Real Housewives of Atlanta? But just remember, while you're watching these reality stars live out their dreams on TV, making money, you could potentially be letting your own dreams pass you by. TV can be a good distraction from the everyday norm, but only in moderation. So try cutting your TV time in half and spend the rest of the time reading, learning something new, or working on a hobby. The extra time spent investing in self-development can lead to a new side hustle or just a better quality of life. Tip number four, get off the gram and go check your bank accounts. (laughs) So similar to tip number three, social media can be very addicting and it does offer us an escape from reality. But rather than spend endless amounts of time scrolling on Instagram or Facebook, scroll through some of your bank account statements. Check that. (laughs) Tip number five, download and organize your banking and personal finance apps. So download every bank app and other personal finance apps that you use. Organize them on the home screen of your phone. So if you have the ability to put them in a nice folder on your phone where they are easy to find, that is best. It makes accessing and tracking your money and transactions much easier. Number six, set aside time for a money check-in. Each day or each week, you pick a time. So I would recommend if you really are just starting and your finances are in a bit of a mess, You might need to do this every day, or maybe if you're in maintenance mode and you're a little further ahead on your journey, maybe you can do it once a week, but set aside 10 to 15 minutes where you can review your bank account and budget and other finance metrics. Call it your daily or weekly money check-in. Make it a habit and it will become easier to keep up with. Number seven, put alerts on your bank account and credit card activity. So set up your phone or email to receive alerts when your credit card is charged or money is withdrawn from your checking account. I do this and I love it because nothing gets past me. So anytime there is something taken out of the checking account or something is charged, I know about it. I get an alert. This allows you to stay on top of your account activity. I, for example, I set my alert at anything over $5. So it pretty much alerts me about everything. So I know about it instantly if something happens. Number eight, never buy something online without searching for a coupon first. So before you pay full price online or in a store, do a quick Google search to see if there's a coupon or discount code available to you. Now, there are even apps that you can use to do this. So I'm not too privy of all those apps, um, but I might have them in the show notes if I find them. But there are a bunch of apps that if you're in the actual store, you can like look up your item. And some stores even match the lowest price. So just never buy something without looking for a coupon first. Number nine, my favorite. Well, one of my favorites. Just ask for a discount. If you're purchasing something in a store, don't be afraid to ask the cashier or clerk if there's a discount available for you. I do this all the time and I'm not embarrassed. You never know, they might just say yes. Also, you can call up your service providers and ask for a discount. You'd be surprised at what you can get by just asking because a lot of people just don't ask the questions. So when you do ask, most people, if it's available, if there is a coupon, they'll give it to you. 
Number 10, donate or sell used unused items. You have a lot of money lying around your house in the form of unused clothes and items. Donate them to charity or take advantage of the tax write-off or just sell them for extra money. But you probably have hundreds or thousands of dollars right now in your closet or in your garage of just things you just don't use that you can sell or give away. Number 11, make saving automatic. If you have a hard time saving on your own, sign up with one of the automatic saving apps like Acorn or Digit. I'll have those links in the show notes for you if you want to sign up or if you've never heard of these apps before. But they are good because it automatically funnels money from purchases into your savings accounts so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to manually do it. Number 12, get money back for online shopping. So if you do a lot of online shopping, sign up for something like an Ebates so that you can get rebates for your purchases. Remember, you're not shopping to get the rebate because that leads to unnecessary shopping. Just shop the way you normally would for things you normally buy and then just take advantage of the rebate offers that are available. Number 13, frozen dinners outweigh fast food. So what do I mean? Have frozen dinners on hand and let that be the last resort before you go out and buy fast food. Now, it may not be the healthiest, but it's no healthier than your fast food options and it's cheaper. I love to keep Trader Joe's frozen dinners on hand for nights when I don't feel like cooking. My favorite is the Trader Joe's organic mandarin chicken. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And the vegetable fried rice. So it's just as tasty, but it's cheaper than going to the corner Chinese spot in my neighborhood that for the same meal, it would cost about $10 more. Number 14, calculate your net worth. Calculate and keep track of your net worth. You can use an app like Personal Capital to help you keep track. And something like Personal Capital is totally free. They only charge you if you want to hire an advisor, which you probably for the most part, don't need right right away. Otherwise, you can connect all your bank accounts to something like personal capital and your credit card accounts and your retirement accounts and all investment accounts. It's in one place and you can update it automatically and keep track of your net worth. Even if you don't want to use something like a personal capital, create a spreadsheet. And there are a bunch of other tracking apps for your net worth out there. So there are options, but I find it It's really helpful to track your net worth, even if it's negative, because if you're working on your finances, even if you're paying off debt, then you're going to slowly start to see the negative number, your negative net worth go from a negative to a positive. And I think it's really encouraging to see that it keeps you kind of motivated on your journey. Now, I'm not suggesting you check it every day because there might not be much movement, obviously, from day to day. But once a quarter or once a year, just check in and look at your net worth. Number 15, this is a big one. Put your goals in a visible place. So to keep you motivated and clear on your goals, you need to see them often. This tip will never get old. I say it over and over and over again. So fill out, um, I actually have in my resource library online, a goal sheet in which you can fill out your goals. So if you want to check that out, that'd be in the show notes too. But really, you don't even need my, my, my sheet. Just get a piece of paper, write down your goals, keep them somewhere where you can see them. Number 16, figure out how much you need to retire comfortably and then plan accordingly. I talk about this a lot too. It's important to know how much you need to retire and it's important to know where you are, how far on on track you are, or how far off track you are. If you're looking for a general number, I talked about the 25 times rule before, but you can do the 25 times calculation, which again, I have that resource in my library and I actually have a sheet that will calculate it for you if you put in your expenses, but it gives you a general number of what you need. So whether you use the 25 times rule or you go online and find a retirement calculator that allows you to do that. Um, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty important to know how much you need to retire, and how much and how far you are away from that goal. Number seventeen, calculate your savings rate. 
figure out what your current savings rate is and set a target for what you want it to be. I also have how you can calculate that, but these are metrics that are important because unless you know where you are, how can you measure how far you reach or how far you get, right? And so that's why it's important to have starting points. So calculating your savings rate is pretty important so that way you can set a target of when you want to increase it or how much you want to increase it by. Number 18, if you have children, start talking to them about money. You don't want them to make the same mistakes you did. So make money a topic of conversation in your household. It's okay to talk about budgeting and saving with them, and it's never too early or too late to start. My kids are only three and one, but you know I'm already thinking of ways to and when I'm going to start introducing money concepts to them. And so I don't think it's ever too early to start with your kids. Number 19, improve your financial circle of influence. Surround yourself with like-minded people who can support you on your journey. Because it is so important that you have accountability and you feel encouraged around the people that you hang out with. This might become a problem or issue if maybe you are on the path to financial freedom, you want to improve your finances, but you find that maybe in your real life that you don't have many people around you in like who can understand what you're doing. And so that makes it a little hard. But this is what I love about the internets, the internets. <laughs> I love the fact that you can connect with people online, you know, that have the same goals, who need the same accountability that you do. And that's why I just love Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for these reasons. Facebook has tons and tons of groups that you can join about helping you reach financial freedom. My group is one of them. Um, or you can join, there's a, there's a, this is a ton of groups. I mean, I, it's really, if you can't find the support and you can't strengthen your financial circle in real life, then go online and find that. And may I suggest that you still try to at least recruit one or two people in real life to help you because it is something to be said for someone who you really know, trust, and love that you can really share your wins with, you know, when you pay off a credit card or just get why maybe you don't want to go to the expensive restaurant. It's someone that will understand why you're making the decisions you're making. Number 20, Make the best use of your time in the car. If you have a driving commute like me and a long one at that, start listening to podcasts or audiobooks to inspire you on your journey. It was podcasts that really helped me jumpstart my journey to financial freedom. I was driving and before I was just listening to music, which there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, we all need to jam out sometimes. <laughs> um, but I really wasn't making the best use of my time. I was in my car and I would be getting annoyed and I not to say I don't get annoyed still on this commute, but now what happens is because I'm listening to podcasts, because I discovered the beauty of podcasts, I pick out things I want to listen to before I start my commute. And it's really almost just like being in school a lesson. I'm learning lessons on my commute. I am being inspired. I am being motivated. I am learning on my commute, and it's amazing. So if you have a long commute, make the best use of your time in the car. Or even if it's a short commute, you can make the best use of your time. Number 21, ask for a raise. <laughs> it seems so simple, but it's something that you can do. You don't have to wait until it's the annual year review to do this. So are you a high-performing employee or you feel that you're being underpaid or undervalued, research the standard salary for someone in your position, in a similar position, and with that information and some confidence and some tact, <laughs> ask for a raise. Um, it's so important. I mean, I talk about this all the time, how income is a driving force of the wealth equation. And so the wealth equation, just to remind you, is income minus expenses equal the gap. And the gap is what you use to get ahead. And so if you can increase your income, that will put you so far ahead on your journey. And one of the ways to do that is to ask for a raise in your current job. Number 22, 
contribute up to the company match. So if you have access to a company sponsored 401k plan and they offer you a match, meaning they will contribute up to a certain percentage of what you contribute, you should be at least at the very minimum contributing up to get that match. It's what they call, quote unquote, free money. I mean, really, it's not that free because it really is a part of your compensation when they do that. But it is, it's technically, let's just call it free money, right? Because let's say you put in 4% and they match you at 4%. Of, so you put in 4% of your income, they will put 4% and match you on that, right? So say you put in 2000 and they match you up to 2000 they also put in 2000 And the beauty of that is it doesn't count towards your $18,000 limit of contributing to your pre-tax retirement plans. So, I, I mean, I, it's just one of those things that if you do have access to a 401k plan and they do offer a match, don't, pa- don't let that pass you by. Take advantage of it. There are things to look out for, like fees. So, you know, if you do have a company-sponsored 401k plan and the fees are crazy, like they're a 1% or higher, then you might not want to go beyond putting your money in a in a in the 401k after the match. But it's it's almost a no-brainer to put it in at least to get the match. Number twenty-three, place more value on experiences and not things. Putting your money towards things like a concert or a night out instead of purchasing pricey things tends to get more satisfaction and happiness. Perhaps instead of putting the value on the latest bag or the latest shoe, you know, you do something that creates memories or experiences. And this also trickles down if you have kids, right? So I know in my family, in our structure, we value experiences with our children. And so I'm not the parent that's going to go out and buy them the latest clothes. Now, they don't, you know, they, they still look fine. They, you can't tell that they maybe are not in the latest fads. I think they look pretty okay. But I, though, would rather spend money on taking them to the zoo or taking them to see a show or just hanging out with them. And most of the times, Hanging out costs nothing. You know, spending time with your kids or spending time with a loved one or a friend can all be done for little to nothing, right? And so there are ways to place the value on experiences and the time spent with the people you love and not on things. Number 24, celebrate your financial wins no matter how small. So if you pay down a credit card, or stopped yourself from buying lunch two days in a row, something you normally wouldn't do, acknowledge that as a win and give yourself credit. Nothing is too small. So just celebrate them because it's the series of small wins that allow you to stay encouraged on your journey. You know, you don't always have to look for the big kaboom, the big, the big win, right? That comes, that's a snowball effect that comes from the small wins. And so just make sure you're celebrating yourself Even the small stuff, it does matter. Number 25, don't be too tough on yourself and your past mistakes or your future mistakes because let's face it, you're not going to get everything right. You're not going to figure everything out. Even I don't have everything figured out as much as that seems crazy. (laughs) No, but seriously, I, I mean, you're, you're on a constant, constant cycle of learning, learning what works for you. Um, you're trying new and different things. So don't be tough on yourself while you're on the journey to launch. Give yourself room to make mistakes and to learn as you go. You're building lifelong habits that are often the opposite of what you've done for most of your life. It's okay to not get it right every time. Like give yourself some grace on that. And so that was my list of the 25 things you can do right, right now to improve your finances. And look, maybe you can't do them all today, right? Like in a perfect world, you would sit down and go through this whole list and just get it done. But let's be realistic. You probably won't be able to do that. But what you can do is you can pick a couple things from this list and implement right now. So maybe you pick one or two things today and then you pick one or two things tomorrow, and then one or two things the day after. But 
the point is you are slowly, you are incrementally making these changes that you can do right now. A lot of the things I mentioned just now, you can do. It takes nothing. It doesn't take extra money. All it takes is an extra effort of your willpower to do. And so I really, really hope you enjoyed this episode, the 25 ways to improve your finances right now. You can find the show notes for this episode at journeytolaunch.com forward slash episode four. If you like the episode, if you like the podcast, please take a moment to review the podcast in iTunes. I'd greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe.